Hi everybody, it's me, Charles Norm from Sports Solutions LLC. We are the creators of Athletic SOS, and it is a software that allows you, if you have a student athlete that wants to get an athletic scholarship, our software will take their uh, academic information, the sport they play, the level they can participate, and we will find all the schools that they match up with, and then you guys are gonna do your further research to see if it's a place you want to be, and then we show you guys how to Go in and reach out to those schools. Let them know you're interested. Let them know that you're academically qualified to attend the school, and they will send someone out to see if you match up. And so all that can be done inside of our software, and we just introduced our high school version, so if there's any high school programs that want to use the software, it is available to you. But what we do here is I come out and I do these talks, and, and then I give you guys down below, I give you a code and I give you instructions, and you can use it also. It is not the high school version, which is a little bit expanded because we want those high school counselors and the high school coaches to help the uh, student athletes. And what we have in the high school version that's different than the individual version is, we also have a um, academic only button so those kids that are not going to play at the next level can still use our software to find schools that they match up with. And we even have trade schools in there that they can find. So our goal there with the high school version is, is that every single student athlete, maybe they're frost soft, maybe they never make varsity, maybe they're on varsity, but they, they're not uh, at the ability that they're gonna play at the collegiate level, you can still use our software because our goal there is that we want to uh, reward every single kid that came out and went to practice, that, that put those years in, that time in, that were part of your program. We want to give them an advantage over everybody else on the campus because they came out and they made that sacrifice. And then our really big overall goal with the software is we want these kids to learn how to go in, do some research, find out where they want to be and learn how to reach out so that as they move past this, and we always talk in 10 year increments, okay, you're 13 to 18, what happens at 23 to 28, and what happens at 38 to um, 33 to 38, and, and on and on and on. We want them to create the life that they're gonna have as they move forward and not wait for someone to select them or choose them or, or and the, that sort of thing. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create this next generation of kids, and we wanna create them in a way where they're gonna help other people do the same thing. So I know it's a lot we're doing with a simple piece of software for athletes, but that's what we're trying to do overall at Sports Solutions LLC. We wanna use and leverage their capabilities of playing sports and then take that and move that on for the rest of their life so they can live the life they want to live, not the, the, the life where my, my generation came from. Here's the pattern, everybody follow it and you'll be okay. They're not gonna have that opportunity and I recognize that and I wanna make sure that they can do everything that they want to do in their lives. It's changed a little bit how the world's gonna move forward and you see it every day in the complaints and the news if you listen to it, whether it's millennials or Gen Z or whatever, I don't, I don't have them all stretched out and how, how they're complaining, their ability to buy a home, uh, inflation, how they can't, you know, they're working all these hours, but they're not getting the pay and all this. This is the old uh, paradigm where the companies, the businesses, everybody else is at fault because they're not cooperating and letting you live the life that you were promised if you cooperated. That's gone now. There is no way for you to uh, cooperate your, your way into a happy, healthy life. And maybe we didn't have a happy, healthy life in the sense that did we build anything for our kids to be able to come in, and come on top of? Or did we fail them in a little ways? We had a great life in, in my generation. We've done really well, maybe financially. You own a home, you're, you're comfortable, you take your trips, you have a nice car, you're married. You know, whatever you've done in your life, you feel like you've accomplished. But did you build a platform that your kids in, that are in trouble right now because of how the situation is, can they come behind you and go, and you can say, hey, just come over here, continue this on, you're gonna be fine, we've got this thing set up for you, and then you can figure out what you wanna do from here. Do you have that? If not, are you really successful in the way that um, is, is not just about you, I guess is the best way to put it. And that's what I'm kind of trying to do with, with our business now. This is a family uh, type business, and everyone that's worked with me that got me to this point, got us to this point, I can't thank enough, and I tell them all the time. I'm really big on that. So anyway, so we're doing this summer series, and I started off with, um, we talked about uh, the difference between improving your game. What is it gonna look like? You left at the beginning of summer, and you're gonna be going back in the fall. And so what do you look like when you return? And we talked about in, most kids are gonna improve during the summer, right? They're gonna work out, they're gonna get more skills, uh, they're gonna be a better player. And so that's fine, but are you gonna evolve? 
And what's the difference? When you go back in the fall, is your coach going to go, oh, wow, you know, they really improved and they're better at that. This is what we told them to work on. And I'm glad that we're going to be able to use them. This is going to be great that they actually did the work. They put the work in. I recognize that they put that work in. Or are they going to come back and you're going to, you're going to be out there and you're working out and you're doing whatever you're doing. And they're going to say, who the heck is this kid? Is this the same kid that left? early on, that's evolving. That's when you've evolved your game to something that they don't even quite recognize. They know who you are and they can see, you know, you, you've gotten better, but that's not the same player. That's where you really kind of want to be. You've evolved your game. And we talked a little bit about that. You guys go look at the other video. And then the final piece of that I did was, um, can you evolve the game? And that's one of those things where you've changed the game. And I gave some examples of that. So that would be your next level. Don't worry about that level right now. See if you can improve. And then if you improve, see if you can evolve your game. And if you can, then later on, you can worry about trying to evolve the game and how it's played from moving forward. And so we did that one. And then we did the one where we talked about uh, your ability to get better and the fact that you're going to react versus anticipate versus sense. And so when we talked about, you know, when you first learn how to play a sport, you learn how to react. You see what's going on and you react to it in, in a certain way. And that's kind of our baseline. And the better you are at that, the better athlete you are, the better you are able to react to something and make plays or make things happen in a certain way. But then the next one is your, your ability to anticipate. And you can see something going on. You can, you can feel it. Uh, I won't even say feel it there because I think that's the next level that, that you you can see where someone's uh, facing or the way the play is set up or you've done some film study and so you're anticipating what the next you know the the down and distance or the the time on left on the clock or what they usually do in this situation and that's somebody that does their homework and that's your next level the ability to anticipate what's about to happen or once the play starts that you can see it you you you, you know what's going to happen next or you believe you do and you're there before everybody else and you break everything up that's that next level athlete but then the final piece was that sensing that you have a sense nothing's even happened you guys are walking back out and you just know What's about that? You can sense it. You can feel it. That's your hyper, hyper level. And so we talked about that a little bit. You guys go back and watch those videos. And so this one, we're going to talk about leadership. And this one's tough because, you know, I had to define what is leadership because we all know in, in athletics, if you played on any kind of a team environment, um, Leadership can be a bunch of different ways. It could be the, the raw, raw leader. It could be the captain of the team that gets everybody together and makes sure everyone's doing what they're supposed to do. They're working on their weights training. They're doing, their, uh, they're doing the drills correctly, that they're not just slopping around. And, you know, they make sure everybody's kind of in tight. But then you have that quiet leader on the team that not the team captain or maybe they're the co-captain, but they just do it by, by performance, right? They go out and they put the work in and they don't let you slip up and, and you follow them because they give everything, right? They're, they're that player on the team. And then you have the, the, the person that may be a little bit of, the, gives the coach headaches. They don't follow the rules quite right. So they have that sort of uh, rebel mentality and they come in and they just got your back. You just feel like you could do almost anything with them because of the way they carry something. They don't fear anything. They, they love to play the game, but it's not that big a deal. You know, they, they're into music or something else. And this is something they do really well, but they don't over over emphasize it the way maybe the captain does or that person that, that does it by um, example. And, those, and so those there are all these kind of different leaders. But how do I define a leader? And so. I think what a, a, a leader, a great leader can do one of two things. They either create a culture or they maintain a culture. So if you have a team that, that has a culture, um, there, there's two types of people on that that can either maintain it or they can create it. So if you have a losing culture for your team, that person come in and turn it into a winning culture. And then if there is a winning culture there, that person come in and make sure that everybody understands this is how we do things. This is who we are. And this is who we're going to be, and it's going to be a winning culture. It's not just a, every man for themselves or every woman for themselves. Um, it is, and so to me, that is leadership. That people will follow that person no matter what. That they they are establishing something that you want to be a part. Everybody else wants to be a part of this. All of a sudden, people want to come in and be a part of it. And so, a great example for me is I hope you guys know basketball a little bit. Um, the Golden State Warriors. I have a, a, one of my brother-in-laws. It's just a complete. Their their whole family is. Um, his wife is up from up north. Now, I'm in Southern California, so Golden State to us is, is just, uh, we're, we're Laker fans, I'll just put it that way. And so we kind of go back and forth. And so there were a few uh, years uh, a little while ago 
where um, the Golden State just just ran away with everything, right? They're they're just the cream of the crop. They're the best of the best. And I and I got it. I used to <laughs> we used to go. It was hard to go and have family outings with them because he was just uh, you know just just. I, I won't say if not. He just was into what he was doing. And so we used to talk about who was the leader of the team. Was it uh, Steph Curry? Was it Draymond Green? Was it uh, Clay Thompson? So you kind of had those personalities that I was talking about. And so his opinion was that it was Draymond Green, that he's the heart and soul. And I couldn't argue that. He's like the heart and soul of the team, right? He's the one where they're down or something. He'd get in people's behinds and, and get them going. And I used to tell him it was Steph Curry. And so it was the year that they had a really good year. The following year, they recruited, they brought in um, Kevin Durant. And so for my brother-in-law, he was, he was uh, looking down on Steph Curry. Because Steph Curry, they, they played really well, you know, won all these games and stuff. But Steph Curry, sometimes in the playoffs, it doesn't seem like he can, you know, things go wrong, right? He gets loosey-goosey with the ball, some turnovers, key things like that. But I said Steph Curry is the leader on that team because Steph Curry got on that plane. He went and recruited Kevin Durant, even though he's the leading scorer. He is the man up there. He is willing. He understands that the culture is a winning culture, and he will do whatever it takes to win. He wants to maintain that culture. I said, Draymond Green, on the other hand, the first thing he did when Durant decides to come there, he doesn't really want him there. He thinks they're doing it themselves, and they're okay. And yeah, he's about their culture, but he doesn't want to sacrifice. He doesn't want anyone coming in and taking over and thinking they are the reason that they're winning. He's got this different mentality. That's not the leader to me. So he came in, and basically, they could have had, they could have ran another five, ten years to me if, if they would have just maintained that and kept Durant there because he fit in. He was clearly the best player on that team, although I still think that uh, he's not a leader in the same sense that someone like Steph Curry is. And then Michael uh, Thompson, to me, he is the guy that will fill in. He has some leadership abilities that if things are going poorly for them, he'll come in and knock in nine three-pointers, right, and bring you right back into where you be. Draymond Green, you guys are down. He's going to rah, rah, rah you to where you need to go to. But Steph Curry is the heart and soul of that team to me. And so we always have these conversations. And so that to me is what a leader is. A leader is a very lonely position though. So before you go back and decide you wanna do this and become a leader, because it changes your whole life if you can become a leader, but it is extremely, extremely lonely, right? Because anything you do wrong will be emphasized. Anything you do right, maybe you'll get some of the credit, but if you're a great leader, you don't need that credit. And so here's the other story I always like to tell. And this is from my daughter's team when she went to play. And I kind of try to keep my personal life personal here, so I'm not going to give any names or anything like this. But, but my daughter was in her sophomore year, and her team, um, she's at a mid-major. And, um, and so for the mid-major, they have their playoffs, right, for, the, for their conference. And so they're doing pretty well, and they get all the way up to the championship game. And my daughter has a phenomenal game, and she's named MVP. And I'm not bragging on my daughter here about leadership, but she had a really, uh, uh, the whole series, she did really well. And people stepped up here and there. But there was a young lady on their team that was a senior that year that really had been the heart and soul of this, this uh, team for her whole four years. She's a leading scorer, leading rebound, and she broke all the records. Just a quiet, but super quiet. I, I would almost say stoic-like, you know, like she, no emotion being shown anything. So anyway, they win and they're jumping around and they're doing all this stuff. And so first they interviewed the, my daughter's coach. And so he talked about, and he was, you can see he was a little disappointed that, that this other player had not won the MVP because clearly best player on the team, not even close. And my daughter loves this this person. And I and because my daughter's so far away, I don't get to know them as well. You know, we visited enough times and we got to know very nice um, young lady, but I don't know. But my daughter has a sense of who people are and she can feel and she would follow this this girl through a brick wall. She just felt that strong about who she was. And so the coach is talking and, and trying to explain how uh, this other player, the senior player, had, had, had a problem with her foot, and she did. And my daughter had talked about it, that she was playing through the pain. And so he's trying to explain this thing because to him, it hurt him that she didn't get that final accolade. Because if you know anything, the mid-majors, you win, and then you become the 16th seed, you go to the NCAA tournament, and you get destroyed, right? That's pretty much, so this is pretty much her last hurrah. And he wanted that for her, and I felt it. And so he sort of, he didn't demean the other kids. I won't say that they did well, 
but he just sort of was trying to explain why he felt she was still the most important player. The senior was still the most important player. And so then they interviewed the, the, the senior and my daughter, I can see my daughter on the side. She's going to be next for the interview and she's nervous as heck, right? Because she just had a great game. And so they're going to talk to her. So that senior came on and the person who was doing the interview had followed her also. And so the way the questions were, he was giving her an opportunity to say, well, and, and it's true. They, you know, they were trying to take the ball out of her hands. They were double teaming and she, but she's been doing that for the last couple of years, right? She's always played through that, but she was actually kind of injured. He was giving her an opportunity to explain why she didn't have that great game in that moment. And she did not take the bait on this. And this was the most impressive thing I had seen. And what, and so one of the questions they asked was about um, my daughter. How, was she surprised that, you know, uh, how did she feel about that? Uh, it was great, great that she stepped up for that game. And how come she wasn't doing it all year? Almost taking a little dig. And that young lady said to them that, no, you, you've missed the whole point. I was not surprised at all. This is who I practiced with this player for two years. They could do this every week. In fact, she's the one that's sacrificing her game to make the rest of us look better. And so that, and she said that, and she said, and the other thing she said was, and then the freshman, there was another freshman that had a really great game. And so she said, that freshman is probably gonna break all of my records moving forward. This team is set up and ready to move forward for what they're gonna do. That is what leadership is, is that at that moment where you could have some pain, things didn't go well for you in that moment, that that player stepped up and said the things that will create the culture for this team to continue to be great moving forward. Does that, I hope this is making sense for you guys on what it is. And that's what I want you guys to get. So there's a difference between uh, being a leader, a rah-rah, the best player in the team, the one everybody follows and all that, versus being the type of player that understands that you are trying to create a culture that will surpass you even when you're not there anymore. And if you can get that, if you can understand that as what you want to do as you move forward, you will be the type of player that not only will have a great career as an athlete, that's what you want to do initially, but you're going to have a great life because you're going to be able to do that every single place you go. And if you get it right, and that's what we're trying to do with Athletic SOS, we want you to get that right so that when you're 28 and 38 and 48, that you've created a life that you wanted to create and not one that's just about you being a great athlete. Being a great athlete is a good thing. And you guys are going to be able to take that and we want you to take advantage of it. But I want you guys to be a great person. And then remember our goal for Athletic SOS, if you're great, if you have a great life, you're going to help other people have a great life too, or a good life at the very least. And maybe they won't put the work in like you will, but that's good enough. We're okay with that. So that's what we're trying to accomplish here. Again, look down below. I give you the code. I give you instructions for the code. It does not cost you anything to use our software. And what we want you to do is start helping other people. And when you go back in September and you go to school and those coaches see you, you should be a whole different human being. So anyway, I hope you guys are uh, enjoying this series. We're going to keep it going. We'll do this all the way up until school starts. And then we're going to switch into what you need to do to try to make sure you can try to get an athletic scholarship. As always, guys, best of luck in all your endeavors, everything you want to do in your life. We're here to help you. And we'll just keep moving forward. And we got some great stuff coming this year. So please follow us. And um, I think we're going to be excited. We're really moving forward. We're getting a lot of great opportunities. And we want you guys to be a part of it. All right. Talk to you guys later. We'll see you next week. Bye.